Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns here. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most important tools that we need for anything related to coding, which is data science, data engineering, data analysis, or anything really. Uh, and it's known as Visual Studio Code. So VS Code is just an IDE. It's a place that we can write in our Python code or just any language code, whether it's C, Java, whatever. Now to download this, all you would do is just go to code.visualstudio.com and then download the one for Windows. Once you do that, you would simply install it. And after you install, you'll get something like this. Now, this is the interface for Visual Studio Code. The first time that you're using it, you might wanna open it to some sort of directory. I have opened it to a random directory on my computer. I've called that folder test. Now, any update that I make here, I will be able to see the same sort of update reflected in that test directory. So as an example, right now the directory is empty. And if I was to create a file here and just call this test.py. If I go back to this directory, you can see that this file has been created. Now, a .py extension means that it's a Python file. So one of the easiest or simplest line of code that I can write in Python is something like print hello world. And how do I execute this Python code? Well, to do this, I can simply go over here and then open this in integrated terminal. It's gonna open up PowerShell. Usually I don't like PowerShell, but let's just run it anyway. I'm gonna type in Python and then test.py. And obviously it didn't work because I haven't saved this yet. And once I save it, it should print out hello world. So, this is how you can actually run and execute your Python code. Now we don't usually like to have everything just over here, a bunch of different Python files. Uh, we like to have separate directories for different things. So for example, if you're working on a project, you might have one folder that has all of your notebooks, one folder that has all of your scripts, another folder for all of your um, data output, another folder for all of your reference files. And uh, you might wanna also have something like a readme.md file where this could be heading one. And uh, when you see the repository, this is what it's gonna look like. And when you commit to GitHub, you want to have this sort of structure because it allows other people to also see your uh, GitHub project. It helps them understand the flow of the project as well as the structure. So this, test.py, I'm gonna add it to my scripts. Imagine that I want to create a Jupyter Notebook type of format. Well, I could do that. All I would do is under notebooks, I'm gonna create a new file, call this test.ipynb. That's the Jupyter Notebook extension. Now here, this is exactly like Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab, whatever you used before. Just like before, uh, or in Jupyter Notebooks, I can add in code cells. So print hello. I can run the code cell by either clicking this or by hitting shift enter keyboard shortcut. And uh, there we go, it says it prints hello. I can say print two plus two and it's gonna print four. So this is just another way in which you can write Python code. In test.py, every time you run this, it's gonna run the entire script from start to end. In notebooks, you can pretty much just create separated cells where you will run your Python code. In data science, we usually like to use notebooks and data engineering, machine learning engineering. We like to use scripts. So that's going to be the main sort of difference here. Now, within VS Code, not only can you write all of this different code, um, you can also write in, maybe let's just say you have a bunch of queries that you want to run to pull in data from some SQL database. Well, you could do that as well. I'm going to create a folder called SQL. And under this, I'm gonna create a new file called polldata.sql. And then here I can run some SQL statement like select star from some random database. Now you can see here that when I just said select star from, it automatically was able to see some tables. And the reason it was able to see that is because I've already linked a SQL database with VS Code. So if I go here, I see that there are there are two databases here, one for MySQL and then there's one data.db. And under data.db, 
I have a table or I have three tables, one for courses, enrollments and students. And if I click on courses, I can see that I have a bunch of information about different courses here. So it's able to pull in all of this data. It's able to know that th this database exists right now. So that's how he was able to autofill all of the information. So don't need to save all of that. Go back in here. You can see that this is sort of the directory structure that I usually like to follow. I'm going to go or I'm going to create a second video that really goes over the exact sort of um, structure that I like and as well as uh, do a, I guess, better deep dive into every single one of these components. Um, if you want to maybe take a look at something in particular, then definitely leave a comment in the comment section below and I can create an entire video on whatever it is that you'd like for me to explore. So for now, I just want to go over all of the other things that we have available on VS Code. So here we can search for different things in our directories. This is the uh, source control. So if you wanted to actually upload this into GitHub or something, well, you can initialize the repository with this directory and then push this repository onto GitHub. So let's try to see how we could do that. First, I'm going to initialize this repository and it added in all of these different files that we created. I'm going to call this first commit. And then once I hit commit, I can publish this branch. Again, I'm just going to call this first commit and then publish branch. It's going to ask me if I wanted to create this into a private repository or a public repository. Now I have all of my Git configured. So if you haven't done so, you're not going to see this. It's going to ask you to configure Git or for version control. I'll create a separate video for that so you can take a look. But here I can see that I had two options to either create a public or a private repository. Let me just create a public repository here. Uh, it says test already exists. I'm going to have to change this to test two. And once I do that, I can now go over to my GitHub under repositories. And I can see here that it did create a new repository called test2, where it had all of this pieces of information. It has a readme with all of this information as well here. So it makes your life so much easier because anytime you make an update over here, say that you have another script or you want to update test.py from print hello world, you want to create another line of codes that says, um, this is Professor Patterns. I can hit save. And once I hit save, you'll see that automatically the source control sees that it's there, there is one pending change. Uh, I can go over to my notebooks or maybe on my SQL, I can create a new script here called pull secondary data dot SQL. And another select star from um, enrollments or whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna hit save. And you can see that another pending change has come up. Now, if I wanted to, I can go over here and then just say edited test.py and pull secondary data to include additional info. And then when I hit commit, I can sync the changes with the branch. And if I go to my branch under SQL, the newest commit has now shown up. So I can see that this also um, is here. So this is how I like to use the version control on VS Code. Every time I'm working on a project, I just simply create a new branch on GitHub and then I can kind of work through all of my different projects and scripts and all of that um, within this interface. I can also run and debug. So this allows me to see if I have a problem in my code, it allows me to actually trace um, you know, that logic to see where that problem is. I have so many different extensions. So I have an extension for Jupyter, which I have already installed. That's what allows me to run Jupyter Notebooks. I've installed this extension for, uh, extension for Docker containers that allows me to run my Docker containers. Um, maybe the ones that I would recommend um, early on are Python. I like to have the one for PyLint. That's a, that's a nice one that allows you to um, have some linting support for Python. Um, you might want to also have one for 
IPYNB. So I guess Jupyter Notebook is fine. If you want to run Microsoft Azure or something, you could do that. You have the Azure Tools um, extension. Definitely make sure that you download the ones that has, you know, a lot of people that have downloaded it. So take a look at, for example, like how many likes there are and how many people have downloaded it. So like this one, it has 8.7 million downloads, but only two star ratings. So uh, definitely consider that as well when you're looking at all of these random tools from uh, the marketplace. So that's all of the different extensions. And we can create another video on all of the extensions that I like to use. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna also going to show like different, you can run different tests for Python. Um, you can configure all of your Docker containers over here. So because I don't have Docker desktop running, it's not able to see anything. But once I start it, it should be able to see all of my different containers and all of my different images here as well. Um, although it might take me a little bit of time to actually start all of these things up. But there we go. I started it up and I can see all of my different containers, the containers that are currently running, and all of my Docker container images that I have available as well. Under databases that uh, I showed you before, you can connect all of your different databases here. So you don't need to have like a separate MySQL um, studio or anything like that. You can just have everything within this VS Code interface. And that's what makes this a very useful tool. So what I encourage you to do is after this video, go and download VS Code, um, start playing around with this interface, start getting used to some of these tools, uh, see what kind of extensions that you like to use and uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. If you want me to cover similar videos, then please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make sure that those get covered. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.